Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're down at work again doing a bit more on our little F14 project. Um, so the job for today is to get this, the cylinder sleeves out. Now I've pulled one of the sleeves out already. This is what they look, this is what the old ones look like. Um, now this one is in pretty good condition and would have been quite serviceable again. One of the main reasons, there's two reasons I wanted to, really wanted to change these. Uh, this second one here has a fair bit of water damage down inside it. Um, and so that one wouldn't give us a good service life. The other thing is that they have an O-ring around them here. <clears throat> and over time, the O-rings dry out and crack and start leaking water. Now there's water in here around this part of the cylinder to keep it cool <coughs> um, and if these o-rings leak it starts leaking water down into the sump and into the oil uh, now chances are you can buy new o-rings but chances are that because there's a uh, scratch marks and wear marks on here um, i wouldn't have been able to get these sleeves out and put a new o-ring in and get them to seal again the other thing is that because of the way the cylinders wear, they always get to be a bit oval in this direction because the piston's flapping backwards and forwards that way. So if I pull this sleeve out and turn it quarter of a turn, that wear mark's not going to, uh, the way it's worn is not going to work particularly well if I have put it in the wrong way round. So because the cylinders on these, the sleeves on these are reasonably cheap, I think it was three hundred, just, well, just under $400 US for a set of sleeves, pistons and rings. Now I needed new rings anyway. Um, it seemed well worth just changing these. Now we're really lucky, a lot of these American engines quite early on came out with these, these wet sleeves and they're very easy to change. The English tractors like the Fordsons tended not to use them until about the 1950s <clears throat> when they started running the diesel, the four cylinder diesel engine. I'm not sure about the Perkins P6 engine they used in them. Um, but with those engines, the, the old petrol kerosene engines, you actually had to bore out these, the cylinders to an oversize and put an oversized piston in. So these, these American tractors are great. It makes them very, very easy to rebuild the engine and get basically a new engine in a tractor that's almost 80 years old. Now these sleeves are one of the other really good, uh, good things about taking the sleeves out. You can see all the corrosion and stuff in here. I've already blown this out with compressed air and there's... When you take all these sleeves out, you can actually get in and knock out um, a lot of that corrosion and it gives you a really good opportunity to clean the block up extremely well. And you just can't do that if you leave the uh, cylinders in. Now these are just supposed to tap out from underneath. Um, so this bit here sticks down into the, into the um, crankcase and you are supposed to be able to just tap them out from underneath. Um, I'll just take you down and show you what it looks like from underneath. Okay, so you can see here, this one's, um, you can see it sticks down about an inch into the crankcase. If you look up right at the top of the sleeve, you can just see a bit of an orange stain, which is rust from, and that could be from condensation that's uh, sat in there when this tractor hasn't been in use but on some of these it definitely looked like they were leaking a bit. This one you can see it a little bit more clearly uh, just up there next to the camshaft. Now normally to get these out you get a block of wood and you just tap them on the bottom there. Uh, these ones are well and truly rusted in uh, so we can't just tap them out. Um, we need, to, need a puller to pull them out. Uh, and I'll take you back up the top now and show you the puller that I made up. So just before we go ahead and pull the sleeves out, um, there's always a little bit of protrusion on this top 
lip round here that sits ever so slightly higher than the block. Um, this is where the head gasket actually seals. There's a metal ring on the head gasket um, and this needs to be sitting just proud of the rest of the block to give the proper compression on the head gasket at that point. Now, when we put these back in, we need to make sure that we get the right protrusion on it. I don't have a manual for this engine. So before we take them out, we're just going to use an ordinary ruler across the two uh, sleeves there. Um, and we're just going to use a feeler gauge to check, check the gap underneath it there. So these are <coughs> sitting at 7 thou protrusion. So they're probably probably sort of five, anywhere between 5 and 10 is OK. Um, when we put the new ones in, we just need to check that they're in tolerance um, and they're not going to leak for us. <clears throat> OK, so the puller I made up, um, and this is all made out of bits of scrap I had lying around the workshop. Um, it's a big heavy plate. This is 10 mils thick and I started bending it, so I welded a couple of legs on it. Um, this sits across the top of the cylinder like that. We've got a big heavy plate that sits on the bottom on the bottom of the cylinder. Now if you go out and buy a proper puller made for this, they make nice little, I think they call them pucks, that are machined to sit just inside the cylinder there um, and then uh, with a with a lip on them um, that's the same diameter of the as the cylinder so you can pull them all the way out with this this one's too big and doesn't fit through the hole in the bottom um, but this works fine you've just got to be a bit careful with it um, if we put that on there we've got a long piece of thread this is just off a, um, a gate hinge um, so we poke this up from underneath and then we've got a nut that sits on top Now I've put some tape on the crankshaft journals just so we don't damage the crankshaft by banging it about while we're doing this. Because um, that's the last thing we want is to add more expense to our project by damaging something else. Now these legs actually sit on top of the cylinder. Uh, so we've just got a couple of spaces that sit underneath here. Just got to make sure that they're not sitting on top of the cylinder as well, um, or we're not going to be able to pull it out. Uh, and we just want to make sure that metal plate is sitting properly underneath and we're not catching on anything. That's a little bit better. There's lots of things for it to catch on and if it catches on the wrong thing it'll do damage. So we just need to make sure that everything's sitting down nicely in the right spot. And then we simply do this nut up and the sleeve comes out nice and easily. That's the theory anyway. just not quite sitting where I want it to. So I'll just loosen it off a tiny bit. Okay, now I'm I'm using these just to hold on to the threaded rod underneath to stop that turning as I start to screw up the nut. It doesn't need too much, it just needs to be held gently. And 
And sometimes we still need to get underneath and just give it a tap to make it start moving a little bit. These should just slide out easily. Um, it's only the corrosion that's really holding them in. That one's just starting to come now. Okay, so if I bring you around the side now, you can just see here how this the sleeve has started to pull up there. Um, and as I do it up a bit tighter, hopefully we'll see the sleeve just starting to lift out. There we go, by the time we get it that far out, um, often it will just come out uh, with a screwdriver or a bit of a lever on it or something like that. I'll just pull it a little bit further out this way. And then our sleeve should just lift out. Okay, if I show you down into here now, you can see the amount of corrosion and stuff that is stuck in the bottom of the block there. Um, so it's really nice to be able to get in here and clean all of this out properly. Um, we can also see bit hard to see actually right down the bottom there um, there is an o-ring uh, where the uh, where the cylinder goes through the block further down and um, so I'm going to pull the rest of these out we're going to give this block a really good flow out with compressed air um, and get out all of this this crud um, and then we can start putting this engine back together all right well I hope you found this useful today uh, and I hope to see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Bye